What is going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Now in this one, you join me in an F5 and we're going to be doing the side slip approach into Anderson Air Force Base here in Guam. Uh, now, I just wanted to do this little quick video to show you what is a side slip approach, why it's applicable, why it might be really, really useful. Um, and in general, it's just really good to develop your understanding of aircraft controls, to develop your hand-eye coordination, develop your flying skills. Uh, in reality, why would you use a side slip approach? Well, probably because you had an engine failure and you're aiming towards some sort of landing zone, whether it be a real runway or it might be basically some sort of field, right? Um, now, chances are you're probably going to be a little bit high when you start your approach, right? Which is what you want. You always want to have a bit of extra height in that situation. You never want to be, you know, too too low because you're not going to make it, right? So too much height is good, but the question then becomes is how do we knock off that extra height to get down to the ground, right? Because you know, if you're too high, you just dive it down to the ground, you'll overspeed your flaps, your gear, um, you know, you're going to have a very high landing speed potentially. So, you know, and, and judging it perfectly to be perfectly on glide for everything is very difficult because if you just get it a little bit wrong, now all of a sudden you're going to be in a lot of trouble because you're not going to make it, right? So you always want to have the extra height and there's a few ways of losing that height. Um, you can either do some S turns, right? You basically increase the distance from you to the runway, which is fine. You can use S turns to lose height, but the problem then becomes, uh, well, what if you screwed up on your S turns and now all of a sudden you realize, oh, damn it, you know, I don't have enough, I don't have enough speed, I don't have enough height to actually get to the runway. I'm going to fall short now, right? Well, this is where a side slip approach, or some people, I guess, could call it forward slip, right? But a side slip is essentially cross-controlling the airplane coming in sort of sideways, right? You're putting in, instead of, you know, doing it normal, you're putting in that the, the airflow, relative airflow hitting the side of the airplane and basically creating excess drag, right? Now, all of a sudden you start, you can, for the same speed, you can have a steeper descent. You're reducing the glide. Now, uh, the good thing about a side slip approach is that you can actually control uh, the amount of drag that you're putting on the airplane, right? By increasing or decreasing the side slip. Because if you, let's say you've got a lot of side slip on and you realize, oh damn, I'm not going to make it to the runway now. I'm a little bit, I'm going to drop short. No problem. You just decrease the amount of side slip. And now all of a sudden you've increased your gliding distance, right? For the same air, airspeed. Um, and therefore you can just modulate that all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. So you're essentially increasing drag or decreasing drag, increasing drag or decreasing drag. You can increase potential energy or decrease potential energy. Increase, decrease, increase, decrease, and that's it. Um, now, obviously it's a cross-controlled maneuver. So what that means is you apply rudder one way, aileron the other way. Uh, well, why? Because otherwise you're not going to have a side slip, right? You got to, because as soon as the secondary um, effect of your is roll and it'll try and roll in the same direction. You don't want that. You want to roll in the opposite direction to keep the aircraft wings level whilst you're side slipping. So you're always going to have, you know, left stick and right rudder or vice versa. Um, so that's, it's kind of an interesting challenge. It's really good. It develops your flying skills. So let's give it a shot and I'll kind of show you what I mean. We have two better hand sides. You're clear to disconnect the headset. We'll see you on the left with the pin. Thanks a lot. All right, here we are then, uh, 6,700 feet on base. Uh, just passed through the gear limit speed, so gear's coming down, flaps coming down, landing lights coming on, and we are clear to land 06 left. Uh, we'll be turning on final here at three nautical miles, which normally you'd be at 1,000 feet, because if you want a, a rough guide, 1,000 feet times three equals three nautical miles. Uh, in our case, we're going to be at 6,000 feet here, which means 6 times 3, we need 18 miles, but we don't. We only have 3. So, let's get the controls overlay on, and I'll show you what's going on. Uh, right, so first of all, let's get it pointed towards the runway, so 6 left. And at this point, let's start our side slip. So I'm going to go full right rudder, because we need a lot of drag. Let's get the, uh, let's get the air brakes out. So we've got full right rudder and we're cross controlling with left aileron, right? So there we are. And uh, we're basically just giving ourselves as much drag as we possibly can at this point because 
we are 200 knots. We've got about another 100, well, another 50 odd knots to spare for max speed, so that's good. Uh, we're still pretty high, so we're just judging. We're still max drag because we really need it. And uh, we're just going to keep this cross control configuration, just use aileron for direction control. And maybe just start getting rid of a little bit of rudder, so just reduce it slightly because now we're getting onto the right speed. And this is looking pretty good for the round out. Uh, it's a bit of a downslope at Anderson, so perfect. Just keep the aerodynamic braking going. Okay, there it is. We're on the ground. Let's start to slow it down. Let's get the shoot out. Okay. Get rid of the controls overlay. So, that was it pretty much. Um, so, as you guys can see, for the majority of that descent, we needed maximum. Uh, maximum deflection of the rudder so max uh, side slip essentially and if there was a crosswind you'd want to be uh, side slipping uh, in the other direction from the crosswind right to maximize your essentially the drag uh, so maximize the amount of air hitting the side of the aircraft right you don't want to side slip into the wind because then you'll you'll be reducing the area um, you know to the relative airflow uh, which is not what you want uh, so let's just taxi off here. Uh, but for this approach, we obviously needed, uh, you know, just to start getting rid of the um, side slip as we get quite close to the runway. But you can see there how wor how well it worked, I would say. Uh, right, let's just get rid of the chute. Uh, let's clean up the flaps. Uh, let's get rid of the air brakes. And let's turn the radar off. Okay, and that is our after landing checks complete. Uh, let's uh, open up the canopy because it's a warm day here. Awesome. Yeah, so now case, uh, you know, we just needed to round out uh, or reduce that side slip to reduce the amount of drag as we get closer, as we got quite close to the runway. In some situations, obviously, you might have to reduce it beforehand and just modulate it a bit more or a bit less. So the 15th. The sound of freedom. That's sick. All right. All right, let's continue taxiing to our stand here at Anderson Air Force Base. Uh, as much as I do like this map, it's obviously extremely detailed, uh, much more so than anything that we've ever had in DCS. Uh, it is a bit of a performance hog. I had to reduce my graphic setting uh, by a certain degree to get a sort of similar level of performance that I get, let's say, in Syria. Um, so I think if, if, if ever there was a time that ED could say, you know what, Perhaps this is the limit of what people can run with their, you know, uh, expensive consumer rigs. And perhaps it's time to move on to Vulcan and multi-threading to try and, you know, get a sort of acceptable performance on high settings for the majority of people. And even people with very high-end systems like mine, you know, running a 3090. Uh, it's still a bit, you know, it's still a bit tight. I mean, I had to turn quite a lot of the stuff down here specifically for this map. Right, let's uh, get the landing light taxi light off so we don't blind these guys. Taxi into stand. Now, I know it is pretty questionable as to how a whole bunch of F5s got to the middle of the Pacific Ocean without air-to-air -air refueling. But we'll just choose to ignore that little detail for now. Maybe they got shipped in some container. Um, anyway, I hope you find that quite useful. Um, give it a shot. Give it some practice. You know, F5 is a great aircraft to practice it on. Uh, some aircraft, like the F-18, don't give you enough rudder authority, at least in DCS, I find. Um, so mm, you could do it. You could still do it for sure, but it's just not as, uh, it's not as fun. SU-25 is a really good one. Anyway, that's it for me. Uh, please subscribe for future videos. Hit uh, the like button if you could, and I'll catch you in the next one.
Adiós.